In this video, we're going to talk about how to account for a disposal of a fixed asset on the statement of cash flows. And first of all, when we talk about a disposal of a fixed asset, we're talking about if the company were to sell a machine or a building or some kind of property, plant, and equipment, and it decides to sell that equipment and, and potentially has a gain or loss, right? So there's really three things that are, are relevant in terms of the statement of cash flows. And the first is that any cash that you are receiving, the cash proceeds from the sale, are going to be recognized as a cash inflow in the investing section of the statement of cash flow. So if you sell a building for $500,000 cash, you're going to see that in the investing section of the statement of cash flows. Now also, there might be a gain or a loss that's recognized on the sale, right? So we're going to look at the cash proceeds and, and what's being received in exchange for this building. And then we're going to deduct the book value of the building or the machine or whatever. And then we potentially have a, a gain or a loss. And if there's a gain that's recognized, that's going to be a cash outflow in the operating section. And the reason is, is that this gain made net income higher but it's just really like an accounting paper gain. Really what we care about are the cash proceeds, right? If we receive 500,000, that's what happened with cash. Any gain or loss is just reflecting, oh, well, the, the, the sale price was higher than our original book or our book value, but that doesn't matter. All we really care about is the cash proceeds, so we want to back out any gain or any loss uh, to, to kind of get to a cash basis net income, if, if you will, okay? now. In addition, so if you're working, if you're a student and you're working a problem and you're just given depreciation expense, you don't have to worry so much about this part. But if you're not told what depreciation expense is, then this, this disposal can be very relevant to you because when you dispose of a fixed asset, there is accumulated depreciation that was associated with that specific asset because you've been depreciating it over time, right? And so when you get rid of that asset, you dispose of that machine, that building, that truck, then the, the accumulated depreciation that was associated with that specific asset is going to disappear. And this could affect uh, your calculation of depreciation expense. I'll show you with an example how, how this all works. So let's say that your company has a machine that it uses in production, okay? So it, it's not like the company manufactures and sells machines. It was using this machine for production of some other good that you would sell. And so it's a fixed asset for this company and it sells it for $50,000 cash. Now I need to give you some additional information. The original cost, right? So we need to know the original cost. The original cost of the machine was $84,000. That's the cost when your company bought the machine. It bought it for $84,000. However, when you actually sold the machine later for $50,000 cash, it had a book value, a book value of $47,000. Why are the book value and the original cost different? The reason is, is that you've been taking depreciation on this machine. So if we say, okay, let's take 84,000, the original cost, and we'll subtract the book value of 47,000. That's our book value, here's our original cost. That gives us $37,000. What is that? That's accumulated depreciation specific to that machine. So since you bought that machine, you have taken $37,000 of depreciation on it, okay? Now, let's also say that your company had, uh, I'll just give you some more financial data, your company had uh, $200,000 of net income, and then the beginning balance, the beginning balance of accumulated depreciation for all your fixed assets for your company was 30,000, and the ending balance of accumulated depreciation was 34,000. When I put this A slash D, I'm referring to accumulated depreciation. Okay, from all this, we can figure out all those things that I was talking about before. We can figure out what is the depreciation expense, assuming there's no other disposals and, and so forth, right? We're just going to use a simple example. Uh, but we can also figure out what, what happens to the investing section fr from this transaction and, and what happens whether there's a gain or a loss and so forth. Uh, first of all, you should be able to see that, okay, we're getting $50,000 for the machine. The book value was 47000 so that means we're going to have a gain of $3,000. Here's how that calculated. We take the sale price minus the book value, and that tells us we've got a $3,000 gain. So our net income, that $200,000, that includes that $3,000 gain. We want to back that out. And you're saying, hey, but Michael, didn't we get money for that? Yes, 
but we're going to account for this 50,000, the entire 50,000 in the investing section. In the operating section, we need to undo that gain. And you might be thinking, well, why are we going to undo this gain in the operating section? Shouldn't that also be in the investing section? Because it has to do with fixed asset. That makes sense, but that's not the way it's done. And the reason is that basically think about the operating section as we're trying to get to a cash basis version of net income because we start with net income or net loss at the operating section and then we make a bunch of adjustments to get to cash flow from operations. So we're going to undo that gain in the operating section. Okay. So let me, let me just kind of show you what the operating section would look like. So we'd say, okay, we're going to start with our net income and that's $200,000 that, that's just given. And then with that gain on the sale, we're going to subtract that, okay? Because that was included in net income, but it doesn't have anything to do with cash. So that would take us to 197, if not for the fact that we also have depreciation. So how did I get this 41,000 depreciation? Well, let me let me set up a T account. Let me set up a T account. I think that'll be the easiest way to show you. So here's our accumulated depreciation. We started with a balance of 30,000, right? And we know that we end with a balance of 34,000, okay? But we already said that we sold a machine that had $37,000 of accumulated depreciation associated with it. So that would have debited accumulated depreciation because it increases with a credit. It's a contra asset account, remember? So it increases with credit means it decreases with a debit. This means, hey, we, we got rid of a machine, right? So this, this reflects that sale of machine. We got rid of the accumulated depreciation associated with that machine because we no longer have that machine so we shouldn't have accumulated depreciation on our balance sheet associated with it okay so now we need a plug here we need a plug what would we have had to have credit this for to get to thirty four thousand dollars and the answer is uh forty one thousand and if we're crediting accumulated depreciation for forty one thousand what would have been the associated debit it would have been depreciation expense because we debit depreciation expense generally when we record depreciation and then we credit accumulated depreciation. So that's what it's saying. There was there was an entry that was made. Oh, I'm running out of space. $41,000 debit to depreciation expense, $41,000 to accumulated depreciation. Okay. If you want to set up an, an equation too, you could also say, okay, the ending balance of $34,000 is equal to $30,000 plus X, which is whatever the accumulated depreciation that would have been credited because of depreciation expense, uh, then minus 37,000. And then if you solve that algebraically, you get to X is 41,000. Okay, so that, that's our depreciation expense. That's our depreciation expense. So if we take the 200,000 in net income, subtract the gain, add back the depreciation. Why are you adding depreciation back? It's a non-cash charge. Okay, doesn't have anything to do with cash, but it made our net income lower. So that gives us net cash from operating activities of 238,000. So this is our cash flow from operations section. Of course, in a real firm, there'll probably be other activities too. I'm just trying to give you something really simple. Now, remember, we received $50,000 cash for this machine. And so that is accounting for in the investing section. So here's our cash flow from investing op uh, activities. So we just have one thing here, $50,000. So the net cash provided by investing activities would be $50,000.